and just a little bit background about, or a little bit of information about my background. I've been in the industry for a little over 20 years, worked as a research site at an academic medical institution, and did have to negotiate budgets from that side and include the overhead and the breakdown of the different arenas that would be involved. So from my perspective, it wasn't that hard. And then I moved into the clinical research side as a CRA and then eventually CRA manager, project manager, and developing budgets on that side and felt quite a bit more frustration trying to deal with the diversity of sites and expectations and budgets and then developing the entire clinical team budget and trying to figure out again how many hours it was going to take for a monitoring visit or how many days, how much time would be needed remotely if we were doing a remote-based study in any respect, how to incorporate the risk management portion, how many hours that was going to take, the hours to write the monitoring plan, and then as we outsourced vendors, looking at again, what are reasonable budgets for the different activities being performed as well. And certainly having been on the sponsor side, that was one perspective, and then also having worked on the CRO side and having to provide budgets for bid defenses, having reviewed budgets from bid defenses and trying to compare them and determine are they realistic for what's being requested. I've also had the experience of reviewing budgets from different vendors, lab vendors, EKG vendors, and again trying to determine is it reasonable, is it fair market value. So today our focus is just general best approaches or best practices. And with that said, I'm very curious if there's anything in particular that you would like to focus on or any specific questions that you may have. It sounds like you have a variety of clinical operations team members in the room with you. So if you have any particular questions, just let me know. What we do know about budgets, unfortunately, is that according to CenterWatch survey, budgeting and contracting remains the top cause of study delay. Of 950 participating investigative sites, 49% of respondents picked contract and budget negotiation and approval as a key factor in study delay, more than any other activity edging out patient recruitment. And that's very logical because, again, when we think about our startup timelines, the timelines that we give sites to recruit, we say, okay, you'll have nine months to enroll 15 patients at each site. But if they use up, three to six of those months with budgets and contracts, that only leaves them three months, potentially, or a little bit more to actually enroll. So then they are behind in enrollment. So the budget really contributes to that. And I do see the question that's come in to explain how to calculate FTEs. And I don't have slides on that for today. So I do have some reference material on that. So I'll try to touch on that as we go through the presentation. But if I don't focus on it a lot during today, I'll try to pull up what I do have and make sure that I send that to you following the call today, so thank you for letting me know that that's a concern. And again, it's sort of a broad topic in terms of FTEs, meaning CRAs or just general headcount for how many hours you need for the trial, because certainly we divide it into departments as well, so we may only need a certain bucket of hours from a statistician, where if we're looking at CRAs, it's very, very challenging to know if whether we're going to be hiring them ourselves or working with a CRO, a contract research organization, can we ask them to dedicate people to our trial 100%? Do we have a high enough volume of work for the monitoring, the phone calls, the management of the site? Perhaps we're also going to have the CRAs assist with regulatory review, informed consent review, or if not, again, do they, do they just have enough work that justifies a full-time employee or 100% dedicated contractor for a task? So I'll try to touch on that as well. And this presentation, it's really going to be, well, let me move into the slides a little bit more. But the focus here is really going to be on developing clinical study budgets for sponsors. So the question was, is a presentation on creating budgets and contracts? So I'm not going to talk a lot about contracts. More, again, just the concept of what do we need to consider in budget? So I'll start out with talking about some of the considerations legally in terms of what the Office Inspector General expects. And, and again, it doesn't fall directly under FDA jurisdiction, other than we know that payments to subjects should be fair and non-coercive. But the actual budget to the investigator or to our site, we really have to consider as a fair market value. So we'll start out by talking about that. Then we'll move into key questions and items to address prior to developing the budget. 
so considerations again at the, site le at the sponsor level and talking about site budgets as well. Our background, why budgets are a challenge. Starting up and enrollment challenges contribute heavily to clinical trials, lasting 42% longer than expected, 31% longer in phase two, and 30% beyond planned deadlines in phase three on average. And we know that every day we don't get our clinical trial done, every day we don't get to market, we lose money. But what we do have here are some actual values. Each day a clinical trial extends over schedule, drug developers lose as much as 600,000 in foregone sales for small or niche products, or as much as 8 million for blockbuster drugs. So as much as we can streamline our startup processes, the more likely we are to meet our timelines. So our, our objectives for today, based on our catalog description, discuss the elements of fair market value, review key questions and items to address prior to developing the budget, and address techniques and tools for use in budget development at the sponsor and site level.